Hello, um, and welcome to Terminus on Terminus. Um, this session is about how we at Terminus plan and execute our ABM programs. My name is Asse Britt, and I am the VP of Growth Marketing at Terminus. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Terminus, we are a multi-channel engagement platform for account-based marketing. And I am really thrilled to be here today as part of the ABM-a-thon. Um, just to tell you a little bit more about myself, just to give you a little bit of background, um, Terminus does have offices in Atlanta and Indianapolis, but I am a full-time remote employee. So I actually live in Northern Virginia outside of Washington, DC. I include a picture here of the Tidal Basin by the Jefferson Memorial. Um, it is cherry blossom season here, um, which is a great time of year to be in the area. Um, I am a mother of two, of two people, two kids who play travel softball and baseball, which keeps me really busy on the weekends, um, traveling both locally in the area and also out of state. I'm originally from Florida, from Orlando. For those of you who probably don't recognize that picture, that is downtown Orlando. Um, and my family, I was, I was raised there, family's still there. I go down a couple times a year. I really miss the warm weather and, uh, and just the being closer to the water than we are here. All right, so let's get started. So today we're gonna be talking about, you know, how Terminus uses the Terminus platform to do account-based marketing. Um, and some of the things I kind of wanna go out over is our approach when we're doing ABM campaigns. And the way we kind of think about it is first, when we're starting out on our, um, our ABM programs, the first thing we do straight out of the gate is we think about what are our objectives and our goals for the campaign. You know, what do we really want to accomplish um, with these campaigns? And we kind of look at certain use cases that we bucket them in, which I'm going to talk about. The next thing is, what is the campaign strategy? You know, what is our approach going to be to the campaign? What are those key messages that we want to get across? What types of offers are we going to try and, and put out there? What kind of content assets are we going to put? Are we going to share that kind of support those key messages? And then next is a multi-channel engagement plan. So this is the part where I think is the most fun when you kind of think about, okay, now how am I going to distribute this content? How am I going to get my message out there and reach those targeted accounts that I want to go after? Um, so we're obviously big proponents of taking a multi-channel approach. We know that people don't get their um, information just from one sole source, that they need to hear it multiple times and from multiple different directions before it really sinks in. So I'm going to talk about what some of those channels are that we leverage for our own ABM campaigns. And it, interestingly, it's a mix of digital and also offline as well. Um, and then we're gonna talk about execute, measure, and optimize. Um, so now that you have your plan together and your strategy, it's about execution. How do you kind of get that out there in the world? How do you measure what are the KPIs that you should be thinking about um, in seeing if you're driving success against those goals that you set out. And then this optimization side of it, tweaking it, trying to drive more engagement um, in terms of eventually you know, reaching those goals that you have set. And then I have an example at the end um, of a campaign that we ran at Terminus that kind of shows you how all this kind of comes together and how we kind of leverage um, this type of framework in terms of doing our ABM campaigns. All right, so let's get started. Um, so before we dive too deep in this, this is an advanced ABM course. Um, I'm sure folks attending this session probably have already, you know, done some ABM campaigns um, or are, you know, well seasoned in terms of, of doing various types of programs. But I just wanted to set some assumptions that I'm going to be making um, as we enter into this. So we're not, you know, getting down to the basics. One is that you've already established an ideal customer profile for your organization. Um, second is you have marketing and sales alignment on your ABM go-to-market strategy. And then you have the resources in place to execute an ABM program. Now this resources is both, you have people within the organization that are putting together the plan and the strategy, but you also have a program budget, you know, to take advantage of the multi-channel programs that you want to do. Now, some of those things may not cost you any money, or you can leverage, you know, some um, 
tools and stuff that you've already paid for. Um, but some of them are going to have variable costs associated with them, especially when it comes to the advertising side. Um, so you want to make sure that you have some of those things in place before you get started. Now, one of the things I always want to share with people is you can really grow and scale with ABM. You don't have to do all the bells and whistles straight out of the gauge. Um, it might seem a bit overwhelming to some folks um, who do that. You can really kind of start small and build on it. So you don't need a huge budget um, or a ton of internal resources. Um, but what I'm going to share today is kind of like if what, what's possible that's out there that what you can do through if you were firing on all cylinders, um, what's available. But I don't want anyone to get to think that you have to do it all straight from the beginning. All right, so in terms of types of ABM campaigns, we kind of think of them in three different buckets um, when we're setting out to do our different ABM programs. The first is new logo acquisition. Um, this is probably the most popular and most common type of ABM program um, that marketers are going after because we, we tend to, to be responsible for driving more net new business than anything else. Um, so that tends to be the biggest bucket in terms of use cases. The second is pipeline acceleration. So pipeline acceleration, by what I mean by that, are doing targeted ABM programs that are focused on open opportunities. This can be for uh, new business, but it can also be for customer expansion. Um, and then the last one is customer expansion. Um, so with customer expansion, marketing teams are getting much more involved and being focusing on customer lifetime value, life cycle marketing, those types of roles are becoming more popular within marketing organizations. And I think what people are realizing is, you know, you have these great relationships with your customers, or you should be fostering good, strong relationships and be that trusted partner with your customer base. And with that opens up new opportunities to expand your relationship with that customer. Um, so a lot of Organizations are, you know, always improving their product, new product releases, enhancements, but also a lot are acquiring other companies and getting new functionality and adding it to their, their product that way. So there's lots of opportunities um, typically to kind of take that back to your customer base, since you should have a good understanding of what your customer pain points are and um, in using that for customer expansion. So ABM is a great go-to-market strategy for customer expansion as well. All right, so let's talk about setting our objectives and goals. Um, so in terms of campaign objectives, the way we look at it uh, initially is which one of those use cases does this fall into? So what is the purpose of the ABM campaign? And we kind of tag it to one of those three, new logo acquisition, pipeline acceleration, or customer expansion. And then the next thing is, what are your campaign goals? And we think about these as primary and secondary. So the primary goals are, these are the really the, the uber goals that you want to accomplish with your ABM campaign. These are the KPIs that you're going to report um, up into leadership, sales leadership, marketing leadership. Um, so it's really what you're trying to do in terms of moving the needle. And for us, it's very closely tied to revenue. So we want to make sure that our ABM programs are driving revenue. And so, but to do that, we measure how many qualified opportunities um, were generated from the campaign, from these targeted accounts, what kind of pipeline um, was created from it, and then how much of that was closed one revenue. And then for pipeline acceleration, just because it's a little bit more nuanced, if it's pipeline acceleration, then these are already open opportunities that are in pipeline. So obviously you're not creating those, but you do have an opportunity to impact the sales cycle, making it faster, um, and then also increasing the opportunity size. So as you're kind of nurturing these opportunities, through their opportunity journey through these ABM programs, we have seen opportunity sizes increase with that. Um, and then there are secondary KPIs. And these are the types of KPIs that really the, the person managing the campaign is monitoring. So these are your ABM managers, 
um, who, who are looking at it from the marketing standpoint and making sure you're driving that account engagement because that really is the, is the first step is are you getting engagement within those accounts that you really care about um, and then opportunity conversion so say you have a hundred accounts that are in this abm campaign and you have 70 percent engagement which is excellent you want to generate opportunities out of those 100 accounts so what are you doing in terms of like the conversion rate of driving those opportunities and then also your creative engagement so these are the types of metrics of if you're running targeted display ads what kind of click-through rate are you getting on those targeted ads if you're doing any kind of sales um engagement using tools like a outreach or a sales loft and soft if you're using any of those like are, are, are you getting engagement? Are you getting responses from those emails that you're sending? Um, and this is all to really do that ongoing optimization during the account, during the, um, the course of the campaign. Um, we always, we definitely see fatigue that happens on display ads, especially if you're hyper-focused and say you're only going after hundred accounts. Well, if you're only going after hundred accounts, those hundred accounts might get tired of seeing the same ad for two months. Um, so you want to make sure that the team is monitoring that. And when you start seeing some of that drop off and engagement, okay, now it's time to kind of serve up your next set of ads. All right, so next is the campaign strategy. Um, so now you've set your goals and your objectives, you know what you want to measure and what the purpose of your campaign is. So now it's about, okay, then what's your strategy? How are you going to achieve those goals? Um, so the first step is your target audience. Um, so who are you really trying to reach with this campaign? Now, you already have an ideal customer profile. You know what types of accounts are the best fit for you, but that could be thousands of accounts, depending on like what business you're in and, and what your offering is. For instance, for us here at Terminus, um, because of the nature of our platform, any B2B marketing, I'm sorry, any B2B business could vet, take value from our, our platform. But we want to get more narrow, you know, in our targeting, we're kind of going um, after them for very specific campaigns. So it probably is the same within your organization as well. So some of the other things that you want to consider for your individual campaigns that you may want to kind of fold in into your um, programs in terms of really kind of narrowing down that targeted account list per campaign is you know, weaving in intent signals. So if you have a particular, say, feature or product um, within your portfolio um, that you're really trying to promote um, with this campaign, then you want to look at intent signals that are showing that they are actually in the buying cycle or there is some level of interest in that particular subject matter, in that aspect of your product. Um, so that will just show that, like I said, they're in an active buying cycle. So now you have fit with your ICP, but now you also have the, um, the behavior aspect of it and you kind of mesh that together, which will help you narrow down your list. Um, and then there's some other attributes. Again, it really just depends on what your business is and how you're going to kind of determine what, this, what the goal of the campaign is and the best fit. You may want to look at some um, companies that have a very specific tech stack that works very well with your tech stack. Um, if they're in a very specific industry, say you're wanting to go after folks in healthcare, um, that way you make sure your messaging is really tight on folks in that industry. You also may have very specific case studies and customer testimonials in that industry because people want to hear from folks that are like them. Um, and then other than that, there are other things you can think about is what is the account status? Um, are you going after somebody who may have a competitor that you're trying to displace? So these are the, some of the other attributes that you can weave in for your target audience. And then the next one is persona. Um, you want to make sure that you have a good firm understanding of the personas that you're going after. Um, we look at them as primary and secondary, primary being like who are the key decision maker in the persona, and then secondary are there's going to be other folks within the organization that are influencers that are going to come in probably during the buying cycle who are going to influence um, the decision making, but they may not be the ultimate decision maker. And then the last thing is, is there a campaign theme? How are you going to tie all this together? And that kind of goes back when you're thinking about what your key messages are, is making sure that that's woven 
in through the multi-channel creative that you're using um, to make sure that it's consistent and it's really having that, you know, that impact that you're trying to go after. All right, next is the multi-channel engagement plan. Um, so when you're putting together your multi-channel engagement plan, you have your strategy, you have your goals now. Um, now you're getting to where you have to figure out, okay, what are my messages? What are my offers? What is my creative gonna look like? And where am I gonna kind of distribute um, this to make sure I'm reaching those target accounts? So when thinking about your key messages, um, some things to take into account is you really want to focus on the pain points of your customer and your prospects. Like what problem are you trying to solve? What kind of benefits are you bringing to the table? How are you helping them do their job better and achieve their goals? That's the type of messages that are really going to kind of resonate with them. Um, also, are there new product capabilities that you want to promote that maybe people don't know that you have, that you offer now as part of your platform or your offering? Um, one of your key differentiators, you know, could be stellar customer support. Um, so that's another thing that you can think about in terms of your key messages, like what kind of differentiates you, what sets you apart um, in terms of what you can do for, for those customers. Um, also, you know, what's new with your company? I put that in here because if you're doing, say, like a win back type of campaign or um, going after closed lost opportunities from before, they may have looked at you, but they may not have looked at you in a year. So there may be a lot of new things that, that these prospects may not be aware that you offer now. Maybe they didn't go with you because you didn't have it at the time. Um, so that's something else to keep in mind. And then how you compare to the competition. Um, you know, what kind of sets you apart? How are you different? Why should they choose you over the competition? And then in terms of offers, there's all kinds of different offers that you can, you know, put out there to drive that account engagement. Because um, I think one of the things with ABM is it's not so much about driving the individual leads and, con you know, um, from it. It's about really getting engagement from those accounts. I think for those of us who work in B2B, um, we understand that buying committees are getting bigger and bigger, more people are involved at some level in the decision making process, so we really need to kind of reach and influence multiple people within organizations. Um, so that account engagement is really key and you can do that by offering all kinds of different content assets in terms of educational. Um, depending on where they are in terms of their maturity curve and in, in the types of, you know, whatever the product or service that you're offering. Um, then there's also more bottom of the funnel type of offers that you can offer, like a free trial, like a demo request. Um, if you do proof of concept type of things, you know, you could put things like that out there. Um, and then webinars, events, if you have some strategic accounts um, that you're really trying, you know, those big bet types of strategic large organization accounts, you may want to do some special events that are really targeted towards them where you're having an executive briefing or you're doing a round table that is more specific to that organization. And then... <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of tactics that you could deploy is these are just the different channels um, that you may want to use to get those content and those messages out there. Um, targeted display advertising is one of them. Um, depending on what platforms you use, you can get pretty targeted with the display advertising, not only targeting the accounts, but you can also target um, functional areas within an organization. So say you're trying to reach people in the finance and accounting department, and you want managers and directors because you can do it by job level. So you can really kind of hone in um, deeper into where your ads are being served, not just at the account level, but also at the function and job level. Um, another one is email. So email signature marketing. Um, th this is a great, I think, underutilized type of um, channel. Now, these are the banner ads that you sometimes see in emails that you receive that are under the signatures. Um, the nice thing about this is you could use a tool to do it and there's no incremental costs associated with it because they just get inserted into the outbound emails. Um, also, the marketing teams can manage those and you can do it by list. 
Um, you can do it by industry. There's a bunch of different segmentation um, functions that are available. So your sales team doesn't have to touch it. They don't have to swap stuff out in their signature or anything. It's kind of controlled and managed um, at the admin level from, from someone usually in the marketing department. Um, next is paid social. So paid social is another channel that is great in terms of your marketing mix when it comes to ABM. Um, for us at Terminus, we use LinkedIn heavily. That's because that's where our audience is. Um, we market to go-to-market teams, and so we use quite a bit on LinkedIn. But depending on who your target personas are, maybe LinkedIn is not the right place for you. But there are other, obviously, paid social channels available, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. There's also other ones like Quora, which I've heard some organizations have good um, success using that. So I think it just kind of depends on really where your audience is in terms of reaching them. And then... Um, using some type of sales engagement tool, like an outreach sales loft, a vanilla soft. And I think I put this in here because for ABM programs, in my opinion, to be really successful, you have to have that marketing and sales alignment. And so while marketing is doing all this outbound advertising and messaging and, and, and driving you know, that awareness and engagement, you need to have sales following up on their outbound motions um, at the same time hitting up those accounts. So you wanna make sure that those are in sync. So like the offers that you're offering, say through your display ads and your email signature ads and your paid social ads is really kind of aligned to the messaging and the offers that you're putting in the sales outreach, just to make sure it's all consistent. Again, going back to that consistency in terms of campaign theming. Um, and then some of the other ones are direct mail and having experiential events. Sometimes these two are tied together. In the example that I'm gonna show you, they are. We had a direct mail bundle that was part of an event um, and then custom landing pages. Um, then you wanna set whatever budget that you have for this campaign. So you wanna make sure you establish a campaign budget for program spend. So that way you can kind of estimate, okay, what kind of return am I gonna get from this campaign? Um, cause obviously you set goals in terms of your opportunities and pipeline and close one revenue that you want to achieve. Um, so we should give you an idea of what your, our, what your, um, budget should be depending on internally what your metrics are. Like, do you look to have two X ROI, three X ROI, five X ROI, it depends on, you know, what you set for those internally. Um, but we always establish some type of budget. Um, now some of these items like I said, our initial outlay, fixed costs. So if you have an outreach or a sales loft, you've already paid for that, right? There's no incremental cost when it comes to that. With email signature, you buy a tool that, that kind of does that. There's no incremental cost, but you're going to have others that are. Some of those that I listed here are your display ads. You can have some media spend associated with that and paid social direct mail to get that executed, you know, all the items that you're sending, you're going to have expenses with that. And then if you're going to do any kind of events um, as well. All right. So next we're going to do um, talk about the execute measure and optimize. Um, so in terms of execution, one of the things that we do with our campaigns is we really create a work back schedule. So many of you marketers, if you've ever had to kind of, you're familiar with this, you're, you have a target launch date for whatever program you're going to run. And then in order to kind of, you need to kind of lay out all the project management, all those steps and tasks you need to get done and build in those timeframes um, in terms of getting it done, getting the feedback that you need um, from whatever internal stakeholders need to do any kind of reviews. And that will give you a better picture of when you really need to launch these things. Um, so I would say I definitely make sure you build in time for that initial that I'm sorry, that internal review process and gathering that feedback, um, either from sales, customer success, you know, whoever product you want to make sure if you're, you know, with your key messaging, um, if you want someone to look at that from product marketing, just whoever needs to be involved that you're building that into your process. I will say one of the things that we have learned over the last year um, during the, even really during the pandemic, um, in doing direct mail. And I think we've all felt, um, the impact of the supply chain issues that we've had personally, 
in our personal lives, but also in business too. Um, so that has caused us to really have to kind of add a buffer when it comes to our direct mail. Um, even if we're like procuring items that we're going to put in our warehouse or um, we're doing drop ship, we have to really build in some little bit of extra time um, just to make sure things are getting there um, in, in time for whatever you know event or thing that you're doing. Um, next, deploy your tactics. Um, so depending on your schedule, like not everything has to launch on day one. Um, you can do a rolling layout. Um, so if some things aren't quite ready yet, you can, you know, you don't have to necessarily wait for them. So sometimes we will start running ads to our targeted accounts a week or two before our sales and our SDR team starts their outreach, just to kind of warm the accounts up a bit um, before, you know, they start doing their outreach efforts. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and again, if you're having different benchmarks, if you're running like a, a three month campaign, um, that you could, you know, you could do that. Um, next, you want to make sure that you're having those, those key check-in points and breaking it out into phases for your ad refreshes. And that's what I just meant. Like, make sure you have a tickler on your calendar or whoever your ABM manager is every like three weeks go in there. Let's make sure if they're not checking it more frequently, they probably are, but let's just see how the click-through rates are doing. Let's see how those sequences or cadences are performing. Um, if you're doing any AB testing, you know, which one's doing better. And then um, that will just let you know if you're starting to see some fatigue or if you were testing, say, a subject line in a particular email, it's just not doing as well. So you might want to turn that one off. Um, and then measure. Uh, you want to make sure that you're measuring your success. Obviously, you want to build a scorecard uh, with your primary KPIs. And then you want to make sure that, like I said, the marketing team, whoever's managing the campaign on a more day by day basis is monitoring those secondary KPIs. Okay, um, and then you want to optimize. Um, so even though it's in progress and it's running, I know when we run our campaigns, um, we run them, you know, at least for a couple of months, if not longer. Usually it's by quarter, if not, you know, depending on the size of the account, it could bleed into two quarters. Um, I think it really depends on your organization, your sales cycle, um, how long you want to run these campaigns. Is I think it's kind of it depends on the organization and the product, um, but you can optimize, like I said, during the campaign, if you're making sure you're monitoring those metrics, just to make sure that they're driving the, that engagement that you're seeking. All right, so now I want to show you an example of an ABM campaign um, that we ran at Terminus. It was about a little over a year ago that we ran it. And it was really focused on, um, let me tell you. <laughs> so the campaign objective was new logo acquisition. Um, and our primary goals were driving, obviously, qualified opportunities, pipeline, and close one revenue. And then from a secondary KPI perspective, we were wanting to make sure we were hitting you know, a certain account engagement percentage and, and also setting an opportunity conversion rate. So the target audience that we had for this campaign was we were um, really focused on opportunities that we had lost um, in the previous, like looking back six to 12 months ago. We didn't want to do it too soon because, you know, it's like, oh, we just didn't go with you last month because we didn't have the resources. And it's like, okay, nothing really has changed in a month. But what we find is if you do that look back period, we kind of find that sweet spot in that six to 12 months, nine to 12 months for us personally. Like, again, it kind of depends on your business. Um, and we narrowed down the closed lost um, reason codes because we wanted to get more targeted in our messaging and keep it really crisp on um why we were reaching out, why we wanted them to give a second look, why we thought now was the time. Um, so we filtered on a specific closed loss reason, which the company made no decision. Uh, they just weren't ready. The timing wasn't right. Um, or they felt like they're, they weren't ready for, to bring on ABM yet. They had low ABM maturity. Um, so there was an interest there, but for, there was inertia, like for whatever reason, they were like, 
mm, we're going to look at this and they're kicking the can down the road. Um, we also wanted to make sure that these weren't opportunities that were lost too early in the opportunity journey, that they actually got to a certain stage before they decided that they were going to hit the pause button. Um, so we use that as another filter is they had to hit a certain stage in our opportunity journey. Um, then we were looking at the personas, of course, our, our primary personas are marketers, our secondary personas are sales leaders. So we wanted to reach out with people in those functional areas at these targeted accounts. And the campaign theme that we kind of we, we did because of the timing, this particular campaign, it was in uh, end of the year in Q4, um, we wanted to have a theme that was about fueling your 2021 ABM strategy. And we partnered with a local company in Indianapolis called Tinker Coffee. Um, so I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that um, that Terminus, our headquarters are in Atlanta, but we have a second office location in Indianapolis. And during this pandemic time, we wanted to work with someone locally and um, Tinker Coffee is well known in the Indianapolis area. Um, so we partnered with them on this campaign in terms of our direct mail bundle that we use and also the event that we ended up holding. Um, so in terms of key messages, what we really wanted to get across was some of the new functionality that we had available. We had made some enhancements to our platform. At the time, Terminus traditionally has been known for targeted display advertising, but we had added so much more functionality to our platform. That's why we're multi-channel now, um, that we felt like the awareness was still somewhat low. And when some of these um, accounts have considered us, they may not have known that we offered a chat product, that we offered a web site personalization product. Um, also had email signature marketing now. So we wanted to make sure that that awareness was there. Um, also the fact that we were one platform. I mean, all of these different um, components are native to our platform. So you could deploy all of them from a single location. Um, and we also had received some third party, you know, um, accolades from analysts. Like we were part of the Forrester New Wave report. We also had a TEI report. Um, that we wanted to kind of share that some of the stuff that we were getting that third party validation to make people feel like, okay, um, Terminus is being recognized, you know, by these different analysts um, as a leader in the ABM category. Um, and we had just issued a state of ABM report. This is an annual report that we create, and it had gotten released just about a couple months before we, we did this campaign. And we were just sharing the latest stats. It was vendor agnostic, we do the survey with an independent company was global, you know, about what the state of account based marketing was and how companies were adopting it. And um, interesting enough, in, in 2021, because we were still within the pandemic, we actually saw a faster um, acceleration into adopting ABM because of the pandemic that people really kind of hunkered down and, and really focused on their best fit accounts. Um, and the state of ABM report was showing that. Um, different offers that we did, lots of content report, you know, infographics. We also did this experiential event, um, which I'm going to show you some, some images of that. Um, so tactics that we deployed, took the multi-channel approach, like I mentioned before. Um, we did ads, email signature banners, paid social. Um, we had a custom sequence that our SDR team deployed. Uh, we had a direct mail bundle with items that we had procured. It was a custom direct mail kit, um, which I'll show you. Tie that to an actual event, a virtual event that we held that was tied to the Terminus and Tinker kind of coffee theme. Um, and then we had a custom landing page that we were driving everyone to. Um, in terms of budget, those expenses that we had, um, the variable costs, we set a budget for ads and paid social, also for the direct mail and the fulfillment for the um, for the items. Because the event was actually held, um, the folks over at Tinker Coffee actually did the event. There was no charge for that because we were partnering with them in terms of the items that we'd also procured for the um, for the, the kit that we had sent. Um, I just wanted to flash up. This is an example of the work back schedule that we did. Pretty simple spreadsheet, just kind of starting like when you want to launch the campaign, what are the different aspects and the pieces that need to get done, and just doing like 
listing out step by step what it needs to get done. So that way you can quickly see, oh my gosh, okay, we need to start this two months, you know, ahead of time um, in terms of at least this aspect of what we were doing. And you'll see things rolled out at different times. Um, so like I said, you don't have to do everything at once. You can kind of start with the ads and the email signature ads, you can do your paid social, um, and then have that date for your actual physical event. Um, so here are some of the creative that we shared um, during the event. Like I mentioned, one of the content assets we did was this interactive um, infographic that we hosted. And we were, had ads to these targeted accounts that were driving you to this interactive landing page with the infographic. These are all also some of the ads that we used to promote some of those content assets. You'll see over at the right, these were some um, stats from our state of ABM report that I mentioned um, that was promoting that. And then on the left, this kind of highlights um, some of those newer channels that were now part of our platform that we were trying to get some more awareness of. Um, and then we also had a set of ads that were targeted to the event that we were running. Um, so again, Terminus and Tinker having that kind of coffee theme um, to it. Um, and we hosted this brewing event, this coffee brewing event, where we sent um, about, I think we had three different samples of different types of coffees um, with a handheld brewing device called an AeroPress um, that we kind of walked people through in terms of how to use it during, um, in terms of brewing the different types of coffees. So this is what the direct mail looked like. Um, we sent, like I said, the handheld AeroPress device along with a pound of a custom blend coffee that we had um, kind of procured through Tinker. And we also had a, um, a Terminus you know, insulated mug as part of it. And then up in the upper right is just kind of an example of you know, one of the brewing techniques that we used during this event. Um, we wanted to try something that was a little bit different. We've also done some like wine tasting mixology events that have also been very popular. Um, but this was just a different kind of spin on it um, for those folks that are coffee lovers. That, and we also we did it, I think, during during the day, earlier in the day, which sometimes those cocktail hours you have to hold to the to the evenings. And then here is an example of the ABM scorecard that we use. Um, I mean, in full transparency, this is from our Terminus platform, obviously, because this is a Terminus on Terminus session. Um, but I really like it. It's really simple and, and, and clean in terms of kind of getting a snapshot of how those campaigns are performing. Um, so in this campaign, we had nearly 300 accounts um, and you can see the percent account engagement. And then um, unfortunately I had to cover up some of the stats. Um, I couldn't quite share there, but we do track, like I said, the number of opportunities that were generated, how many were closed, one, the pipeline created. And then you could also easily drill down at each of these account segments because um, you can pull them by list. So at the top, you get the overall view of the campaign. And then on the bottom, you can include all these specific account lists that you use. So you can segment them, you know, how granularly that as you like, and then you can really look down and say, okay, this segment had this amount, you know, of account engagement and opportunities, like they were driving most of it or hit lower than I wanted. And then um, you can easily kind of drill down because it's connected to your CRM and then see um, which those specific accounts that were closed one or, or created that pipeline. All right. I think that does it um, for the presentation today on how Terminus does Terminus, uh, uses Terminus for our ABM programs. Um, so I think we got a few minutes left. If there are any questions, happy to answer them. Okay, um, so the question is, how do you recommend leveraging the ABM scorecard into sales actionable steps? Um, so with the ABM scorecard, we can kind of see like, are you hitting the mark or not when it comes to those opportunities that you're generating? I would say um, what we kind of use with, with sales actionable steps is on account engagement. So you can look at the accounts, say in the example I showed, we have like 60% account engagement. You can drill down and see those 60 accounts. Um, and then 
reach out to the, make sure that the people who own those accounts on the sales side are following up. Um, Cause if you're seeing that they're not following up, that is where you can make sure that you're pinging them and say, Hey, all these, these 10 accounts of yours, you know, had account engagement and by account engagement, that is like website visits on our website, or they, um, they responded some of our, they registered for a webinar or they um, downloaded a piece of content. We track all that. So all that goes into the account engagement score. Um, so that's how you can kind of activate sales and let them know. Now they'll be receiving those alerts anyway, but if you want to kind of see, are they actually doing something with those notifications that they're getting, that's where you can kind of activate sales and say, okay, you're getting this engagement. You need to, you need to follow up with these accounts. Oh, here's another question. Is there a common snag in a new ABM campaign that you see? Something people tend to not think of. Um, I'd say with, with ABM is, again, I think you can start small. I think some people can sometimes get overwhelmed with the possibilities that are out there. Um, so I think to get started, really kind of focus in on, you know, what your objective is, what are those best fit accounts you want to go after? Don't think about scaling up too fast. Like say you have your top 50 account list or, you know, even your top 100 account list that you want to go after. Like, how can you make sure that you are going after them in a meaningful way? And um, you're having the personalized experience. You're having the customized messaging. You're really kind of understanding those accounts um, because I think that's what's going to resonate with them. Um, so I would just say, don't feel like you have to use all the bells and whistles and all the channels at once and have this huge account list. Because the thing about ABM is about being more focused, um, because that's where you're going to see your biggest success. All right. Um, well, thank you very much. I appreciate everyone attending this session today. Um, if you want to talk more, feel free to reach out to me, you know, send me connection requests on LinkedIn, um, be happy to talk more about ABM, um, or any other B2B marketing, you know, types of, um, uh, you know, kind of challenges and stuff that you're faced with. I am just like you, I'm a B2B marketer <laughs> trying to reach, um, achieve my goals every quarter. Um, so thank you so much to Mojo Media Labs for having me on today. Appreciate it.